Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet, uh, and today we're going to be checking out a video on Chrome's developer tools. Uh, most of the stuff that we're going to cover in this video will be just as applicable if you're a Firefox user using Firebug um, or any of the WebKit browsers, but specifically I'm going to be using Chrome today because that's what I use for development. Um, also, this is going to be a little bit of a different video in that I don't really have it uh, planned out as much as normal, so it's going to be more of like a, I guess, a stream of consciousness type piece, just kind of messing around with things. Um, and so if you want to see more videos like that, or less, and uh, if you want to see more on Chrome DevTools in general, uh, let me know in the comments, uh, and I can definitely make that happen. Um, so just to get started, I built like this really, really, really basic website. Uh, we can come check it out here. Um, so I made like this HTML file that's literally just, you know, a style sheet, a title, an H1, this little unordered list. Uh, it sources jQuery, and then it sources a script.js. And then um, as far as the actual um, uh, style sheet is just the background color, just to make sure that's working. And then similarly, there's uh, there's just nothing in the JavaScript right now. So it's just this really basic website I thought we could use as a template uh, to getting started with Chrome DevTools. Um, so one of the first things that I wanted to talk about is that with Chrome DevTools, you can force um, element state, which is pretty cool. Um, and especially helpful when debugging anything with like JavaScript or CSS that relies on like a hover or a focus or active or something like that. So one thing that we could do is we could go into our uh, style sheet and we could do something like, you know, all anchors when they're hovered uh, should set the color to red or something like that. And so we can go ahead and save that. And then we can go back over here and refresh the page and we can see when we hover over this link, it goes red. Um, but as you get more advanced applications, uh, sometimes it's just really difficult to like keep a hover state on something. Like especially if you were like, when I hover this and click this, I want something to happen. It gets really difficult to debug. Um, so one thing that's really cool with Chrome's developer tools, let me make these a little bit bigger here, is that you can trigger those states like hover, focus, active, anything like that uh, with the dev tools themselves, then you don't have to worry about messing around with the mouse. Um, so while we're kind of talking about little shortcuts, tips and tricks, uh, the way that I always open and close dev tools is on my Mac with command option I, um, and that'll open them up into the element and then I can close it again with command option I. So you could also do something like right click anywhere on the page and inspect element. Um, but it's one of those things that I just find is a lot faster. I just, you know, as I'm working, I go command option I. Similarly, um, I see a lot of people that when they need an element like this one, they'll like try to get right in there specifically and right click on that element and do inspect element, which is nice because it'll bring you there most of the time. As you can see, it's highlighted with links. Um, but one thing that's really nice to be able to do, especially on more complicated UIs, is they have this nice magnifying glass right here. So if you click the magnifying glass, you can start kind of moving through throughout the document and it'll show you if you were to click what it would open, uh, you know, what it would hover, what it would highlight. So I'm going to go here and grab, you can see below my cursor um, is that A for anchor tag. So you can see that I'm on the right thing and I click it and bam, I've got my anchor tag brought up over here. So as far as this forcing state business goes, it's pretty cool. There's two ways to do it. Uh, the way that I prefer is going over here underneath the styles tab. And you'll see this like dotted box with a cursor in it and it says toggle element state as the you know the tooltip pop over so you click on that and you get your four states active hover focus and visited and then all you have to do is click the checkbox so if i click the checkbox for hover i can see that it turns red uh, and i can hover and unhover and then the really cool thing is i can leave that state on and then i can go back to my ui and you know trigger any other events that i'm looking for so that's really helpful um, you'll also see that down here it actually brings up the styles for the hovered state. So then you could like do something like if you wanted to build proof of concept in Chrome DevTools before uh, putting it in your actual code, you could you know let's let's do that kind of as an example of how I might I might do something. So maybe before I make this whole selector, so I don't have any of that. And then I go back to my page and I've got it here. So one thing I might do is I might, you know, use the magnifying glass, go to my anchor, which brings it up, then go over here and click hover on, which sets the hover state. And then I would uh, go back over to the top and I would add a new element and this would be a colon hover. Um, and now I can start messing with things in here, um, you know, like color, green, 
uh, you know, font size, I, you know, I mean, obviously these aren't things that I would do, but um, text decoration. So you can really do these things where you can start building it in Chrome DevTools where you can see it just instantly. Um, and you can trigger like, oh, what does that look like as I hover and unhover? You know, it's kind of a cool way of building things. And then when you're done, all you could do is, you know, go ahead and grab all this stuff, uh, copy it, go back into your, you know, whatever your whatever text editor you're using, uh, and then paste it in. And now you save, refresh the page, and you've got, you know, whatever effect that you were looking for. Uh, that's pretty jarring. But you could build something really nice, I'm sure. Um, so that one's pretty cool. Another thing that I really like a lot is oftentimes I'll be just curious for a number of reasons on how many of something there are on a page. Um, and one thing that I'll do a lot, especially on pages that have jQuery loaded, is I'll just use jQuery uh, as a way of interacting with the page. So, like, for example, if you had, you know, a bunch of links or say you were on Twitter.com and you wanted to see how many tweets were loaded or something like that, you can always go into your console and you could do something like throw a general selector for the UL. Um, and then from there you could just do, you know, ul.length because it returns an array. Uh, so there's one unordered list. And then similarly, if I wanted to see, okay, well, how many list items are there on the page, I can do li.length and see that there's three. Uh, and this gets pretty cool. Like if we hopped over to Twitter or something like that, and like my example, I was like, I really wonder how many tweets load on your initial page, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, you can just find the selector, uh, which I believe is just tweet. And it returns like this giant, you know, array of all these tweets. Uh, and then I can do just tweet dot length. And I can see that it loads 26 on my initial page. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, one other tip that I do a lot is uh, the Chrome console accepts a clear command. Um, and so you can just trigger that by either uh, throwing a function like this, which will clear your tab, um, or you can do a command K and it'll clear your tab, which is uh, something that they take from like a lot of terminals and things like that. But if it ever gets too noisy with a bunch of stuff everywhere and you just want to see again, I always do a command K and it clears up my whole tab. So I think that one's pretty cool. Um, another thing that I like a lot is this ability to scroll into view. Uh, so if we go back over here, and these are going to be really contrived, but you could think of, I'm sure, like an applicable scenario for it. But like, let's say we had like a ton of links, right? Um, and so we've got this like page over here that's just like full of links. And, um, and like you're in the element inspector and then you do something like you're like, okay, well, I need to trigger something, you know, on the like... 50th link or something like that, you know, so this returns all the links and then you, or maybe there's not 50, I'm not sure, but you know, the 25th item or something like that. So it's like this random link here. Um, and that's what you're looking for an effect on. And you want to see where that is in the actual document. So one thing that I think is really cool to do is you can right click on it and you can click reveal an elements panel, which will bring you back over, you know, we were in console over here and now we're back in elements looking at this link, which still isn't super helpful. You can see above the word elements, you'll see this little li and an arrow pointing down um, but you still don't know exactly where it is so what you can do is you can right click on it here um, oh man it's not working for some reason all right let me I'm not sure why that's not working oh here it is okay sorry so don't click on the content inside right click on the list item itself and then scroll into view and it'll take you you know anywhere on the document that you need to be and actually you know bring it into view which I find really really helpful a lot you know especially if you're working on a big app like Facebook or Twitter and you're like oh where is this little you know widget that I'm trying to trigger uh, you can just right click on anything and just scroll it into view which I think is great um, sounds pretty cool another thing that I like using a lot um, is when you just need an element out of the way for a little while. What I see a lot of people doing is they'll right click on it and they'll delete it out of the DOM, um, which is nice, except if you need it back, the only way to get it back is by triggering a full page refresh, which isn't super helpful. So one thing that I think is a really cool little trick is that you can hit the H key when you've got any element highlighted and it'll uh, hide and then reveal it again. And you can see it adds this class web inspector hide shortcut. Um, so I find this really, really cool. Like for example, like again, to use Twitter as an example, if I was like over here and I'm working on some page and they put this like huge, you know, here are some people you might enjoy following thing that I don't really want there right now because I'm working on something. I can use the magnifying glass, uh, you know, let's see if I can get in there. Yeah scroll up a little bit, find this whole thing, and then just hit H on it, and it's all out of the way, um, which I find really nice for a lot of different things. Um, so it's pretty cool. 
Another thing that I like is this audits tab. I feel like people don't use it uh, all that often. Let me go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Um, one thing you'll notice different about mine is I have this accessibility uh, audit and I got that, that's like a Chrome DevTools uh, accessibility, I spelled that wrong, extension, um, which is really, really great and I'd recommend getting it. Um, accessibility developer tools and it just adds that audit tab but you won't have that one by default but this will audit all sorts of things like making sure your website works well with screen readers and that the markup is semantic and that you know your color contrast is good for people that might have uh, color blindness things like that um, but besides that there's a bunch of great things like you can run uh, network utilization or web page performance so a lot of people use even sometimes paid sites out on the internet to see how their web page is doing. Um, but in fact, you can just go ahead and just run, uh, you know, web page performance right from your console. Um, so there's like uh, a CSS rule that's not being used or something like that right now. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, it's this, it's this web inspector hide shortcut. That's the one that's not being used. So I think if I actually go back and refresh, uh, and run an audit, uh, then I won't have any problems there. But it does really cool stuff. So like, for example, if I was back in here, like we saw with the unused rule, and I had something like, um, you know, I don't have any spans in my document right now. So if I was like, all spans should have, you know, a height of 100 pixels or something like that. Um, and then I, you know, refresh and I run another audit, um, it'll, it'll find these things, which are really great because, you know, you're sending down all this extra CSS that you're not even using anywhere. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and it does a lot more. Like if you're on a more robust site, like I can go to uh, one of my sites. Let me go to Code Planet. Um, open up the Element Inspector. Go to Audits, Web Page Performance, and then I'll just run on it. And I'm sure with this huge like WordPress thing, it'll actually come up with a bunch of different tips and advice for me. And that's free. It's built into your browser, so it's really cool. And it's maintained by you know Google. So um, you know it found all these things that are let's see included after external. Oh, so it's like some CSS rules in the head which are blocking page load. Um, then we've also got uh, unused CSS rules. All right, this is a pre-made theme, but it does seem like it's using uh, 1,705 CSS rules that it's just not not being used. So um, these are really, really great ways to speed up your website. Uh, similarly, back here, we've got this network utilization audit. So if I go ahead and I click run on that, um, it'll do... So these are like kind of like two sides of the same coin. This is like the actual performance of your page itself and then this one looks a lot more at like page load and things like that uh, so it's looking at like my cookie size uh, my image dimensions and things like that but you can find really interesting stuff in the audit and then similarly if you go download that extension which I really recommend uh, you can run an audit and it'll show you all these great things like uh, for example, if you had, uh, you know, link colors that were too close to the background, or if you had a form that didn't have any labels on it, so screen readers didn't know what was going on, uh, a bunch of really cool stuff like that. So I like that a lot. Um, another thing that I think is really cool is if you go back to this network tab um, and you hit refresh with the network tab open, it'll show you, let's, let's actually like pop this out. Oh, that's, I guess that's another cool tip is that, so you can, by default, I think it's on, uh, the Chrome Element Inspector opens on the bottom. Uh, you can one click over here and move it to the right side. This is particularly useful because one thing I see people doing all the time is they're trying to test their website for uh, responsive design. And so what they do is they like actually take the whole website and they start, you know, shrinking it down. And then I've seen a lot of this like on Stack Overflow where people are like, hey, I'm trying to test my website and like Chrome won't let me go any lower than, you know, 400 pixels, but I really need to get to 320 pixels or something like that. Um, and so I, two cool things here. One, with Element Inspector open, it shows you the width and height of your web page. You can see it up here in this corner, which is great. Uh, but two, if you do need to get your website smaller than that, the real way to do it is just to pin this thing to the side instead, and then you can bring it as small as you could possibly want, like I guess all the way down to 147 pixels. Um, so you can check out your website like that. Uh, and then the last thing you can do is you can hold down uh, on this button and you can pop it out entirely. So then you have like this full screen app basically. And this is really great if you have multiple monitors. So you can have one app uh, or one monitor with just Element Inspector on it and then one monitor with your actual website on it. Um, but so if we pop this network tab out uh, and we do a refresh like we did with the network tab open, um, we get all these really, really, really cool options. Um, so let's go ahead and refresh Code Planet there. 
and here it comes. So we see all this great stuff. Like this top one here is going to be the text HTML. It'll be the only one like this. And this is the actual document. So this is really useful for seeing like your load time and how much time was spent just getting the actual markup from the server. Uh, and then the rest of it is like stuff that's getting loaded in kind of asynchronously. So like style sheets, JavaScript, images, things like that. So this is really great for a number of reasons. But one thing that I think is important here is that you can figure out if it's your server rendering that's slow or your asynchronous client side rendering that's slow on a website. Um, and so you can kind of see here these little, uh, let's move this over a bit. Um, so what you can see is we've got like the name of the file, we've got the method that was used to get it. So you would see like post requests in here if you were like filling out a form or something. The status that came back, so you could see if anything was uh, 500ing or 404ing, like if you had an image that was missing, what type of file it is, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, what initiated it. Most sites you'll see, you know, for the most part that it's just your document that initiates all things. Although you will see some really interesting ones sometimes like, uh, uh, like this, this like GIF that's for a picture. A, I'm sorry, a poll that I have on my website is actually initiated by this like weirdly named JavaScript file. So you could do some cool things like that. How big it is, how long it took to load, um, and then this really nice waterfall timeline of like how everything works. So you can see like if we scroll all the way down and if we look over here, there were 52 total requests. 20 total kilobytes transferred and it took 1.74 seconds to load uh, and then this is really cool too it's like the whole load was you know 1.74 but the actual dom content itself which is really important was only 1.58 so you know other stuff could be like images coming in or javascript loading up after the dom content loads um and then you can see some really cool things like how long everything took to build uh, um, and what's really nice is like the detail here where you can if you hover over one like let's take I have this Facebook picture right so I click to like us on Facebook um, and if you hover over here it'll see that it was um, stalled for 1.4 milliseconds so nothing was happening the request hadn't gone out yet then it sent the request unfortunately oh I can hover a little bit cool so then it sent the request and that took 0.1 milliseconds then it was waiting for the server to return with it that took 100 milliseconds and then it downloaded it over 4 milliseconds so you can really start seeing like if you got some stuff that's slow on your website and this one's cool too uh, this is another gif but you'll see that it's got like DNS lookup, uh, how long the connection took to make things like that. You can start really seeing like exactly what's taking so long on your website loading. Um, and so like in my case, it looks like a large chunk of the time is this initial dumb content load. Um, and so it's like the actual server, you know, putting together the request and sending it down. But I do have a number of things like this request was finished by, it looks like, you know, before one second, like well before one second. And then I've kind of got a lot of these, like these style sheets are pretty big and they're coming down and taking a long time. And then down here also, uh, I've got a lot of JavaScript that comes from WordPress plugins. I can see the names of them over, oops, over here. Um, oops, let me get back. Close this. I can see the names of them over here, like uh, you know, Photon and Crayon, and you know, different things I use. Um, also, just to kind of finish up on this tab, it's really great. You can sort them. You can be like, all right, what about just HTML documents? All right, what about just style sheets? What about just images? So this is really nice, especially on bigger sites that have you know maybe like a thousand different items coming down. Uh, you can look for just AJAX requests, JavaScript, media like. Um, videos, things like that, uh, your fonts if you're using custom fonts, anything done over web sockets, stuff like that. Uh, another thing um, that you can do here which is cool is you can actually just go ahead and open any of these files that were like the initiators and it'll open it in the sources tab. Uh, you know, similarly you could open you know the document itself and just see like all the markup that comes down with it. Um, so that's all pretty cool. I think that we could do like easily a whole screencast on the network tab because it's so fantastic. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to show that for now, uh, and then we can maybe move on a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this back, uh, and I'm actually going to pin it to the bottom of my screen again. And we'll do a couple of last things. So one thing that I think is great is if you're like, say you're like working on your site and like you're looking at this title element, right? So you've got like this uh, anchor tag selected and you're like, okay, cool, cool. And then you like move into your console and you're like, oh wait, I want to select like that specific thing that I just had that I was looking at. Like I want to 
I want to trigger, uh, you know, an event on it, or I want to like see the content of it or something like that, as opposed to trying to find like a unique selector, like primary main post 556, you know, something like that. Uh, Chrome has this really nice API where you can do dollar sign zero, and that'll bring in the last highlighted element from the elements tab. So just to cover that again, it'll bring in whatever you last had clicked on on the elements tab. Um, and then to make it a little bit more complicated, let's say I like click on this H2 and click on this A. They also have a dollar sign one variable that you can use, and that'll be the second last thing selected. So remember, I clicked on the H2, second last thing, and then I clicked on the A, first last thing. Um, so these are really, really helpful if you were like checking something out in Elements, then you really want to do something to it. You know, like, uh, you know, you want to take the last thing that you clicked on and you want to like, you know, change the text to like, you know, oops, to like hi, hi, or something like that. Uh, oh, let's do a inner HTML to like hi or something. Oh man, string is not a function. Okay, but you get the point there. Um, and then one thing which I just fell for to remember is that these are not jQuery selectors. This, even though it does start with a dollar sign, that's why I can't do like this like text or whatever. They're not returning jQuery. They're actually returning just the DOM node itself. Um, so don't, yeah, you can't do your like your uh, text HTML on click, nothing like that with it. But it is cool to be able to just bring it in here. Um, one other thing that this reminds me of is that you can always do things like um, edit as HTML for any of these things. So if you just wanted to like change the text here in real time, you can right click on an element and then click edit as HTML. Uh, and then you can do all sorts of, you know, like, you know, whatever you want here. Uh, and then if you just click outside of it again, it'll save. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I use that once in a while just to see like, like one thing I'll do is I'll be like, okay, I made this design, but what happens if I have a post that's like super, super long title? Um, and so you could like just kind of go in line here and like paste a bunch of crap, whatever you wanted and just see what it looks like there. Um, so that's pretty cool. We covered a lot of that stuff. Oh, one other thing that's kind of nice to be able to do. Uh, so if I do something like a jQuery selector, I think for like a class of post, um, let's go back here. So I go into my console and I grab uh, all LIs, right? Okay, so then I get this like uh, returned array of LIs. Um, one other thing that you can always do like when they return, like if you had jQuery on the page, uh, and I don't think my LIs have a class or anything like that, but if it was returning a jQuery object, another Chrome API thing you can always do is throw two dollar signs before it, um, and this will turn it into an array for you. So if you do a selector, uh, which I, I can't really set up too quickly, but if you do a selector and it returns a jQuery object of items, um, you can always throw another dollar sign before it to get the actual array. So then you could do you know something like the 20th element or something like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then the very last thing that I wanted to cover, uh, try to think of a good example for it, is that within the elements panel itself, you can always do really cool things like break on, um, on a change. Uh, and let me let me back up and explain this one real fast. So basically what we'd want to do is like, let's say we go into our index file and let's get rid of like uh, a lot of these because they're not really not really all that great for this example. Um, so we'll leave like a couple, we'll leave three links in there. Uh, and then I'll have like this div with like an ID of foo or something like that. So we've just got a div with the ID of foo. We go into our style sheet um, and then we do something like we give foo a width of 100 pixels, height of 100 pixels, and background of red, something like that. So now if we save this and go back here, we should see only our three lists, and then we got this big, ugly red box here. Uh, and so then let's say we wanted to do something with our JavaScript um, where we were like, okay, a jQuery selector on foo, uh, and what we want to do is like on a click event, we want to have this function and this function is going to uh, take the element that was clicked and just mess with its CSS say. And so we've got like background and we'll set it to like blue or something like that, some other color. Uh, so we've got this uh, red box now and then you click on it and it turns into a blue box, which is pretty simple. But I don't know if you've ever been on a project, but I certainly have where maybe you're new to the project and there's like a ton of JavaScript code 
uh, and something's happening, like, oh man, this box is changing color, but I can't figure out why it's happening, what's causing it to happen, like what JavaScript is doing that. Um, so this example is obviously contrived because we only have one JavaScript file, but imagine you had like a hundred. Uh, one thing you can do that I absolutely love is you can inspect element, and then you could find the element that's changing, and you can add a breakpoint, and you can add the breakpoint on when the element's removed, when any of its attributes are modified, or when anything in its subtree is modified. Like if it's a UL and you want, and like something was changing the list items, or it's like a table, and something's changing the data. So for this one, I want the attribute modification, because I'm like, what is turning it blue? So I add a breakpoint to attribute modification, and then I go back and I click on it, and this time what it does as it turns blue is it's actually going to show me uh, where in the code it's being accessed in this like jQuery file and what is causing it to turn blue. So if I go up a little bit, I can see this call stack here. So this is the actual style change that's being made, uh, which is coming from this jQuery access, which is coming from a jQuery function, CSS, which is coming from my script here. I can tell it's my script because it shows what file it is. So I can click here and it'll open the actual line in my code that's actually causing that change. So I think this is like a really fantastic thing. Um, if you start messing with it a little bit, it's really great. You can throw breakpoints in the code if you if you really know what you're doing, what's going like where things are happening. Like so, if I just remove this and I go into um, sources tab, you can hit Command P to search your file system that's been loaded. So I can open up my script.js file, and then I can just add a breakpoint, which anybody that's done like Java or C++ like would be used to this great functionality. Uh, and so this will work as well, where it'll breakpoint as soon as it hits that code. Um, and you can see all sorts of great things. But if you don't know where, where in the code it's coming from, going from the elements tab is kind of like this backwards approach, which I really, really, really like. So you can you know, break on uh, attributes come here and you see this full call stack find something that's your file uh, and click on it and then bam you can see what's changing it um, so yeah so that's pretty cool um, there's like a lot more cool stuff but I see that I'm like over 25 minutes here so I'm gonna call it for today uh, if anybody would like to see a lot more of these Chrome videos or anything in particular like we covered already like breakpoints or uh, you know the dollar selectors or anything like that uh, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make another video I uh, hope you enjoyed thanks